Let's consider the problem 1325C. You have an pathetic mixus. In this problem, we're given a graph with or a tree with n nodes in it. Um, each edge in the tree has a label. The label is a distinct integer between 0 and n minus 2. And since there's n minus 1 edges, um, there are n minus 1 distinct labels from 0 to n minus 2. The goal is to minimize the largest value of mex of the mex of any path. And the mex is the smallest integer, non-negative integer, uh, that isn't written on any edge. So mex is basically the smallest value that's not on the path. Okay, let's consider possible examples. So let's just say that n is n is in the range of two to ten to the five. So let's just say that n is two, and you have two nodes. And this node, this edge will be labeled with a zero. Let's use a different color. This edge will be labeled with a zero. And there's really nothing you can do about this. So the largest value of um, max in this case is one. Okay, let's consider if we had, say, a third edge. It doesn't matter if this is 0, this is 1, or if this is 0, and this is 1. It's the same in both cases. It's symmetrical. Um, actually, let's start out this way to make it a little more clear that it is symmetrical. Okay. In this case, there are several paths. There's this one path here, there's one path here, and there is one path here. So. If we take this path, the value of mex over, oh, if it's in the left node's u, this node is v, the value of mex here is 1. If we take this path, the value of mex is 0. If we take this whole thing, the value of mex is 2. So the answer would be 2. It doesn't matter how we set up the graph, the answer is 2. And now we have an idea of what the problem is asking for, because this problem was a little bit confusing. So it's good to draw it out. Let's draw out the last case in the sample input. In this case, we have something, and I'm just drawing it the way the problem statement draws it, which I think is a decent enough way to draw it. If this is your root, why not? Okay, so this is our graph. Let's consider, is it possible, we're trying to minimize the largest value of mix. Is it possible that, um, that the largest value of mex will be zero. Because that would be the smallest one you can get. And the answer is no, because no matter which edge I put the zero on, if we pick that edge, um, it's not the largest value of mex is sorry, the value of mex is one. So the answer is no. It's impossible for the largest value of mex to be zero. Okay, let's look at the next value. Is it possible for the largest value of mex to be one? Well, it doesn't matter which two edges I pick. If I pick, say, this edge and this edge, and I put zero on one of them and one on the other, it doesn't matter, because I can always make a path between those two edges, and the largest value of mex on this path, or the value of mex on this path will be at least two. And again, it doesn't matter where I, oops. It doesn't matter where I pick the two edges for the zero and the one, because there's always a path between any two edges. I pick a big zero here, one here. It doesn't really matter. There's always a path between two edges. Now, let's consider, is it possible for the largest value of mex to be 3? Um, okay. Sorry, we didn't look at 2 yet. Is it possible for the largest value of mex to be 2? Okay, if I want the largest value of mex to be 2, this means that there can be zero paths. There cannot be a path with 0, 1, and 2 on the path. Because if there's a path with 0, 1, and 2, the value of mex on it will be 3. Okay, how can I ensure that there's no path with 0, 1, and 2 on it? Well, let's look at this node right here. It branches off 
into three different directions. This means it can, no path can go in three different directions. One path can go in a maximum of two directions. So if I put zero here, one here, and two here, for any way of scrambling these, and I could also put zero here instead of there, but let's just consider this simple case of just putting zero, one, and two on three different sides of this intersection. Well, now it doesn't matter what path I take, because no path can go through all three ways of the intersection. I can either take 0, 1, 1, in which case the value of max is 2. I can take 1 and 2, in which case the value of max is 0. Or I can take 0 and 2, which the value of max is 1. So if I set up this intersection like this, it doesn't matter how I put the remaining values. I'll just put 3 and 4 randomly. The largest value of max is 2. And because of this fact that we found for this intersection here, this means that in any graph that has a node with degree at least 3, so any graph which has a node like this, which goes out in three directions, so if there's a degree of 3, that means there's three edges going out of it, then the largest value of max is 2, if I label by the way we just showed. Okay, so how do we, like, we don't just have to say what the largest value of max is, we have to actually, um, we have to say what the label of each edge will be. So to do this, we find one intersection, which has a degree of at least three. We take three of the edges coming out of it. And again, we could have a fourth edge here, right? And a fifth edge and a sixth edge. You know, it doesn't really change the fact that we just need to label three of the edges to be 0, 1, and 2. We can also have a degree 3 here. It doesn't matter. We just need to find one node with the degree at least 3 and label 0, 1, and 2. So what we do is we'll look through all the nodes. If we find a node with, and again, degree 3 means three edges going in and out. So we find a node with at least three edges going in and out. We take three of those edges. We label them 0, 1, and 2. And then we label the rest of the edges randomly. Doesn't really matter. Okay, now this works if we have a node with edge degree 3 or greater. I'm just going to delete these extra random edges. Just to make it clear, um, a degree 3, if we don't have a degree 3, then we have a degree 2. And a degree 2 looks something like this, like this middle node here, right? And notice that if we have no degree threes, then essentially we just have a line. And if we have a line, then if we pick this node here as node u and this node here as node v, then this is a possible path, right? If we have a line, this is a possible path. So the largest value of max will be the number of edges plus one. It doesn't matter how we label these, so one, two. It doesn't matter. The largest value of max will be 6, and there's nothing we can do about that. So if there is no edge or no node with a degree 3 or greater, again meaning 3 edges coming in and out of it or more, then we can just label the edges randomly, because it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's consider how to code this. All right, so the first thing, let's just explain the variables a little bit. Answer is what we're going to output as the label for each one of the edges. Max n is the maximum number of nodes that we have. And I'll explain at as we get to it. n is our number of nodes, obviously. Vector int adjacency. So we normally store graphs in adjacency arrays. So adjacency of whatever node it is will have a vector of all the edges attached to it. So for example, if we look at this graph up here, let's take it what it originally was. Um, all right, let's label the edges as they were in the problem statement. One, three, four, two, 
five and six. Okay, and uh, I'm just gonna use green to label like the like if you look in the problem statement. Uh, so the first edge from one to two is from nose one to two. So we will label this with index zero. Uh, the second edge is from one to three. So we will label this with index 1. And actually, I can put the red numbers. We don't need these for right now. Just to make the graph a little more clearer. Uh, the third one is from 2 to 4. So this gets index 2. Actually, we'll just 1 bake these indexes. So 1, 2, 3. The fourth one is from index 2 to 5. So this is 4. And the fifth one is from index 5 to 6, so this is edge 5. Okay, so our adjacency vector will look something like this. It will have all our nodes in it. So actually our nodes we will do 0 indexing. So this is index 0. The two edges it's adjacent to are with index 2 and 1. Uh, this is 1, and the two edges, or the three edges it's adjacency to are 1. Four and, three. and again, I'm not putting these in any particular order to emphasize that the order doesn't matter. Okay, so we'll do something like this, and so on and so forth. This is how we're making our adjacency vector. Okay. That's what the adjacency vector is. Um, so initially the answers will be output. So we're going to start out by setting the entire uh, answer array to negative ones. And this mem set only works for integers if you're setting it to zero or negative one, not to a random value like five. But if it's like a string, you can set the whole thing to like character T or something random like that. That's fine, but not for integers. Okay, now we're going to go through each of our edges while reading the input. So if we look at the problem statement, each edge connects two values a and b so you read in a and b and we want a zero index not one index so we subtract one from each of them and then to each of them we push back we insert into the vector the index of it and if we look here that's sort of what we're doing right for we just push back the index to the end of the vector because the order doesn't matter Okay, then the next thing we have to do is we have to check if there is a node with a degree 3 or greater. This means three edges coming into it. So we run this loop. And again, we only want to find one of these. Okay, so now let me explain what at is. At is, like when we label all our edges 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, at is the smallest value we have not given. So we will label them in increasing order. And I said the order doesn't matter, it can be random. So increasing order of when we see them is probably the easiest one to do. So f starts out as 0, we we'll label the first one 0 and the second one 1, and so on and so forth. Alright, so we'll go through all our edges. If we find one with a degree greater than 2, this means 3 or bigger, then we will take the first three values in it. So adjacency i0, adjacency i1, and adjacency i2. These are the indexes of the first three ones that it's connected to. And if you look in here, we'll find one, and this will give us one, four, and three. And if there are more elements, we don't care about the rest of them, right? If there is something coming out of here, we only want to label three of them. We don't want to label the excess ones. The excess ones we'll just do randomly when we do everything else. <clears throat> so we label the first one 0, next one 1, other one 2. And again, the order of these three doesn't matter. We then set at 3 because we have labeled uh, 0, 1, and 2. So 3 is the next value we will give to an edge. We then break. This break breaks out of this big for loop here. 
because we don't want to label any other uh, edges. These are the only ones we want to have labeled. Okay, we then loop through our remaining edges. And remember, the edges are one index, so they're from one to n minus one, and to n minus one inclusive. And this is because there's only n minus one edges, so from one to n minus one is n minus n one values. And again, we did the same thing here. We push back i from one to n minus one. Sorry, here. Okay, so if answer equals negative one, remember how we originally set everything to negative one up here. If answer equals negative 1, this means we didn't overwrite it here. So this means this edge is empty, so it needs to get a random value. So we assign it to whatever at is, and we just increment at by 1. And at the end, for all our edges, we print out what answer is. So just to explain this a little bit more, so there's two cases, right, for at. Either at starts at 0, which is the case that all of them are in a straight line uh, from down here. Oops. From down here, or at is three, which is one which is the case that's up here, where we have a node with degree three or greater. In both of these cases, it doesn't matter because the remaining ones have to be just assigned at and then at plus one, then at plus two. So that's why we use at to avoid doing a lot of if statements. Okay, so that's it for the code.